Rachel Maddow made Marjorie Taylor Greene very upset by reporting on and correctly criticizing an action that was taken by MTG that by itself is horrible and also represents the extreme fringe characteristic that Marjorie Taylor Greene, or fringe part of the Republican Party that Marjorie Taylor Greene represents, that isn't so fringe, meaning it's becoming far too large of a portion of the GOP. And in an interview, Marjorie Taylor Greene was upset, I'll say, melted down a little bit over what Maddow had to say. Before playing that for you, Here's some reporting from MSNBC. It was against this backdrop that Republican Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia pushed a measure to cut U.S. support for NATO. The fact that Greene pushed this measure is not in and of itself surprising. The Georgian is, after all, one of the most radical members of Congress to serve in recent memory. And then here's the important part. What struck me as notable, however, is that 46 House Republicans, each of whom surely knew the measure would fail, nevertheless wanted to go on the record in support of the extremist congresswoman's gambit. So she's wanting to defund, cut funding to NATO. Here is a uh, March Heather Green's response after this clip from Maddow is played. That we should leave our allies altogether, that we should break up the big Western alliance, that we should defund NATO. And I think nobody really paid attention to this vote because this legislation was put forward by a very fringe member of Congress, a member of Congress who is known for her publicity stunts, and she is therefore eager to, uh, eager, sorry, I am eager. <laughs> she is easy to ignore. <laughs> But it wasn't just her. 46 Republicans voted for this thing. A fifth of the Republicans in Congress last week voted to defund NATO. <laughs> Don't just forget being the leader of the free world. Forget the whole idea of there being a free world at all. They saved that for the anniversary of D-Day. 46 Republicans voting to defund NATO. Uh, yeah, Rachel, because most of those nations in NATO's, NATO were on the other side of the football or neutral, <laughs> leaning towards Hitler, ma'am. You got to learn your history. Much le How on earth that relates to what NATO currently stands for and why it should be invested in? I don't know. Learn your history. Uh, the fringe member of Congress now joins us, Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia. Uh, Rachel Maddow is not happy with you. The ruling elites of this nation are not happy with you, uh, Congressman Green. Can you explain what you were trying to accomplish? Well, of course she's not happy. Rachel's never accomplished anything real in her entire life. She's only lied on television uh, uh, for a living. Um, you know, I've run a, a company, a construction company, most of my adult life before I came into Congress, Steve. I know what it's like to be an American and a business owner um, working hard every single day. And Americans are fed up with funding and paying for the defense of other countries while our country is overrun and our border is ripped wide open. And then on to the border stuff. And I'll play another clip of Marjorie Taylor Greene in just a little bit. But first, I want to respond to what she said so far. I'll remind you on the border, by the way. That is Marjorie Taylor Greene obstructing the very legislation that would serve to address many of these issues. So she's a hypocrite on top of everything else. Before getting into the NATO stuff, she did say, I know what it's like to be an American and work hard. I am so sick of the way that many on the right are super willing to question the <laughs> credibility of American identity for those on the left, whereas the left doesn't do that about the right. And you have this concept that there are certain people more American than others. And I've talked about how it's people like Marcia the Green who don't seem to like that much American values, like a dedication to our democratic constitutional republic, or the values that have helped to shape international alliances like NATO. But that doesn't mean she's not an American, that she isn't just as American as anyone else, even if she wants to take it down with her. But you hear constantly on the right, disproportionately, allegations against the left of not being true Americans. I knew what it was like to be a true American. Really irritating. And then it's just her telling on herself, but I guess MAGA likes it, her lack of understanding of the global importance of an organization like NATO and how it serves the United States' interest. We have become 
in part because of global organizations like NATO and our helping in founding those organizations and then bolstering their strength. That has been a part of what has allowed us to be for this long a world soul superpower, the strength that comes of those alliances. So it serves us in that way. The global stability that comes of a defensive military alliance like NATO that we've seen impacting global stability in a major way over the last few decades, that serves the United States and American citizens. Stopping the aggression of these authoritarian nations like Russia is absolutely in our interest. And she can't get her head around that, which is, again, her telling on herself. And also MAGA has started to align with our adversaries in some frightening ways. Her rhetoric on Ukraine and Russia's invasion of Ukraine shows that in a major way. And I think it's because ideologically, they believe there's actually a lot of alignment. That Venn diagram, the middle part, is bigger than we wish that it was for MAGA and some of these authoritarian regimes across the world that are our adversaries. And then on the funding conversation, we've talked about how here she is trying to withhold funding to the NATO security investment program, which is sort of how you fund programs related to NATO. But the funding conversation normally, and when Trump will say the other countries aren't paying up, that more has to do with the guidelines that are set forth for countries to spend what the goal is, is 2% of their GDP on their own national defense. It's not 2% of their GDP to NATO, but to their own national defense. The idea being that if every member country of NATO is investing in their own military, their own national defense, then the organization of NATO is that much stronger because all of its members are stronger militarily investing in cutting edge military technology, etc. But that's not a requirement. It's just trying to get countries there and countries have been increasing their funding to their own national defense. But Marjorie, even in her speech, as you might see here when I play this next clip, where she was advocating on behalf of this legislation, tried to compare how much we're spending on our own national defense to other countries as a justification for us withholding funding to the NATO security investment program, which is just, it's not, at, it doesn't make any sense. We're spending a lot on our own national security for our own national defense because we want to have a strong national defense, not because NATO is requiring it. And then I have one more major take on this, but first let's play this that we looked at last week where Democratic Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz shuts down MTG over this legislation. Uh, my amendment strikes funding for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, Security Investment Program. My amendment would strike over $433 million in NATO funding from the bill. America should not be doling out hundreds of millions of dollars to international organizations to help them fight their enemies, especially when they are unwilling to fight for themselves. But yet America is beyond our pledge. We are spending in 2023 3.5% of our GDP. But yet we don't do anything to defend our own country and our own borders. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I had to jump in before Washington Schultz does. She doesn't know things. Just nope, nothing. Zip in the brain going on <laughs> for her to say that. She cited how much we're spending, as I said earlier, on our own national defense, meaning our military. So she is anti-U.S. military. She said, we're not doing it for our own defense. It's our national defense. The figure you're citing is quite literally called the Defense Authorization Act. This is why Americans would love to see Congress take action, action to defund NATO and stop spending hundreds of millions of their hard-earned money to foreign countries to defend these foreign countries while we don't defend our own country and our own people. Uh, Madam um, Speaker. I think the sponsor of the amendment uh, has shown pretty clear evidence that she has no idea what the NATO Security Investment Program is actually funding. Um, we're talking about funding that is provided to build infrastructure that takes care of our troops that are overseas so that we can make sure that we invest properly in infrastructure. For and then she goes on to break that down more in detail, but we did it in the last segment, so I won't go through it again. But 
Ah. It's one thing for you to be wrong. Right? Okay. Don't be wrong. But we're all wrong sometimes. Maybe not all of us. Um, no, we're all wrong sometimes. But when you don't know the basic facts of the subject you're wrong about, then it's extra irritating, right? She doesn't have enough respect for herself or for us to at least know what she's talking about as she goes forward to be dishonest or to be wrong, which is uh, insulting. And my final take on this is we talk a lot about the threat to democracy domestically of the MAGA movement. Trump in particular trying to destroy ours by blocking the peaceful transfer of power last go round. What would he do in a second term? We've talked a lot about that. It would be horrible. And even just democracy crumbling in America would be horrible for global well-being and stability because of how intertwined we are and how powerful we are and how the implications of us sort of shaking are the foundation of democracy crumbling, how horrible that would be for the rest of the world. But you also have this extra element we talk le less about, which is the way that democratic organizations, organizations that promote values that we're supposed to enjoy and support as Americans, that those could be undermined. Maybe even the United States could remove itself from some of these organizations like NATO. And that would cause a level of global harm that would be horrific. So that's just a sort of dark cherry on top of the horrible milkshake that is the second Trump term potential and why it's so important we prevent it. Let me know what you thought of all that in the comments. And if you want to get a daily bonus show, if you're thinking, no, the video's over and I already watched all the recent ones, I need more content, you can get access to it by clicking the join button below.